You are all from the Earldom of Ick. And uh, it has been hard times for the Mouse Kingdom. Uh, you all live, um, and let me make sure. Um, you all live in a, um, a giant mouse kingdom. Um, your person would know it as a human abandoned house. But for you, it's a huge um, mouse metropolis. But times have been hard. And uh, it's been hard to find food. And worse of all, um, uh, mouse have gone missing. And it's become dangerous to travel the fields of Ek. Um, lately, uh, the, the, um, you are... Oh, and you're from Oaks Grove. Um, and... Uh, the uh, the Earl of Oaksgrove has become concerned about your relatives from Stumpsville. Um, usually, every week at market day, Stumpsville helps produce the cheese that um, that the Earldom of Eck um, eats, but the the shipment did not arrive on market day, and so. Um, you all are the most brave of mice, and uh, you were selected among all of your relatives to travel to Stumpsville across the Earldom of Eck and to determine the fate of those in Stumpsville and report back. Um, also of note, I guess because this might come up, um, money is what's called a pip. I, I like to imagine like a literal metaphorical rep or I'd say a metaphorical representation of a pip is just a circle but like it's probably a metaphor for just shiny things yeah but so that's a pip and so every pip is like one gold coin or whatever and that's that's how you get paid and also and this is so adorable I love this so much the way you get XP is to find pips that's the only way that you can get XP or treasure worth of pips but then you get more XP if you give the pips to your friends to help the community. Oh, that like doubles your XP. <laughs> so that's how you like progress. You build up your mouse community. So, anyways, uh, you all have traveled across the Earldom, um, and it has been dangerous and cold and dark, and there have been giant birds who have flown overhead, and you've had to hide under huge blades of grass and. Um, uh, you've had to ford this this massive uh, river, um, which is just like a tiny little trickling creek. But um, you've had to like go across stones and make your way across and help each other up across it to get over. And um, uh, and then finally you make it out into the desolate fields of a forest that your human self would know has been deforested. But to uh, to a mouse, it looks like a post-apocalyptic wasteland giant stumps and trees that have been ripped out at the top and they, they tower way up above you and everything and uh, you make it to um, to Stumpsville um, and you're outside of what's clearly like when you look up this huge structure that is a stump towers up above you and uh, there's a little dark narrow entrance and you can see cart tracks and footmarks on the muddy ground here. It's clear that someone's been here recently. Um, and, uh, and you see a tunnel. And this is the only entrance you know of into, into Stumpsville. What do you do? Is it, uh, is it really quiet? Is there any sound coming from in there? Um... Let's see here. Is this one it? I also only have red wall music for this. Uh, uh, can't think of any <laughs> better of a... <laughs> Goodness. Uh, sounds. Um, you can make a wisdom save. 
Okay, so that is a d20, right? That's yeah. Be. And the character sheets actually do work in roll 20 because it's the same as into the odd. Nice. I rolled a one. You rolled a one. You rolled a nat one. All right. Um, you absolutely hear sounds coming from within. You hear, um, it sounds like you hear like a off in the distance echoing farther off. And then you think you hear like um, jeering and cackling from some creature. And you can hear uh, something that sounds like talking. But it's way off. It's way further ahead. But definitely not what you would expect at the entrance of a, uh, a town, eh? No. All right, I relay this to, to August. I'm hearing things in there. I don't like it. A laughter? That's uncomfortable. Hmm. August just sort of looks around and ponders things. So I guess do you mention tracks kind of leading into this to stumps? Bill, um, here, and, and are there any kind of tracks going around the stump, or is it all just sort of a road into this large hollowed stump? Um, that's a great question. It looks like, um, uh, it looks like this was recent, and, uh, it looks like the cart tracks are leaving the stump, and then there's footmarks where they've gathered here, like a lot of different footmarks. So it looks like people congregated here at the entrance and some carts left. It's kind of thinking, you know, if there's trouble in Stumpsville, if we really want to just investigate this on our onesies, or if we should, you know, maybe head back and, and ask for help. Mm. It's quite the journey back, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it'd be like right. days. <laughs> I think it'd be days somewhere. Well, maybe we best just do reconnaissance. Oh, okay, but y you lead. Dread. All right. I'm, I'm using my sling on this one. So, Oaks, that is. Oaks Grove, and I lied. Um, no, I didn't lie. You're you're in an old abandoned house. Is kind of the metropolis of Oaks Grove, and it's uh, between three old oaks linked by bridges, and um, and uh, there are pigeon riders. This is like the most cosmopolitan mouse kingdom uh, in the Eck, um, and it's on the other side of the Great River of Eck. So it's quite a ways. Anyways. Yeah, we're stuck. All right. Um, yeah, Shim's going to very cautiously move forward. Uh, as you move forward into the dark entrance, um, you can see that uh, the, the entrance has got this very elegant intertwined roots that have kind of been formed by the mice here to, to be a really nice entrance as you get closer. Um, decoratively. Uh, and then in the dark, on the ground, you see a um, a rat skull and a big hunk of cheese. Skull. Big so, hunk of cheese. Does the skull look like it's dusty? Or, or I mean, do we need more light to be able to, to make details? Or can we tell in the, the light that we have if it's like a dusty old skull? Or if it's like a fairly recent or singed or anything like that? Do you all have any torches? Um, I have torches. You light one of your matchsticks? Yeah. Um, you light the matchstick and it illuminates further into the tunnel. As far as you can tell... On the ground is a rat skull and a hunk of cheese, a big, delicious hunk of cheese. It's fresh. And then the rat skull, it still has grime on it. It looks like it's fairly recent. But as, as you illuminate your light, you can see that the tunnel is the entrance tunnel into Oaks Grove. Or, I mean, Stumpsville, sorry. It's a half dirt, half wood. 
throughout the tunnel on the inside and um, and then it kind of starts to slope up and you can't see it's a discomforting uh, decoration so being a mouse with my expertise in cheese can I sniff and and tell if there's anything amiss or odd about this cheese as it like relatively fresh is it kind of moldy what, what's the deal with the cheese well you can definitely tell that it's fresh cheese and that it's uh. of good quality um as far as being able to tell something about it uh i think you could try to make a uh a willpower check and would that just be like a d20 but but just to be clear my understanding is you're making a willpower check to try to sniff around and poke around the cheese I just want to make sure I understand that. Yeah, more than anything, I'm trying to see if there would be anything like... With the cheese sitting next to the skull, I'm just wondering if there's anything about it that could have created a dead mouse. Yeah, like poison, etc. Oh, um, how are you doing that? Um, Like I said, sniff at first, see if there's any like obvious chemically off putting odor about it or you know maybe even like take, taking a little whisker like a lick of, of this cheese to so see if I notice anything maybe licking it you can yeah. choose either dexterity or willpower let me do will and that's a d20 yeah that is a six a six is that below <laughs> your willpower um my willpower is 12 nice yeah you uh you're sniffing it and stuff and you can smell like something is off your mouse like nose and whiskers like your proprioceptors are like feeling around in the air and everything and and the scent and you get the scent of something you get the scent of something metallic and you see <laughs> something metallic connected to the cheese connected to so is there like like a like a hook or something buried in it and and then also too, some from, sort of metal size, platform is like connected a... to a spring and then it goes into the oh ground. oh so it's a oh yeah we 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 definitely he just kind of backs away slowly um and is just like i don't recommend that cheese all right jim uh kind of cautiously steps back as well he was already far from it, but now he's about to be a little further. Puzzled, the beetle starts to curiously move toward the cheese hungrily. And I, I rein oh, him in. Oh, puzzle. No, okay. no puzzle. Yeah, he's sad, but he but he comes back. There will be much cheese in another time. Shall we just press on then? Let's go. Have a barrier here, so I'll move you. So you move, you don't get near the cheese. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. Yeah, gonna, gonna very much dodge that cheese. Okay. Uh, you get into a corridor, and you can see, uh, like I said, that it's half dirt made, half wood, um, and uh, there is this stone gateway at the end that's blocking the way. And there are two uh, guardian statues of mice with like. Uh, uh, holding uh, spears, but they've been defaced, and one of them are missing heads and stuff like that. Um, the cracks recent. What's that? Are the uh, like the defacing? Is that recent? Um, yes, and uh, when you look at it, you can see that um, the hinges um, of the gate that's here have been chiseled away uh, and uh, something else is like holding the gate in place other than uh, other than the hinges of the gate itself something else holding together oh, okay does it look like a like a trap or more of a uh, jerry rigged setup to keep it standing uh, how would you determine that uh I'm going to look at the fastenings and uh, if they just look like something simple, like a uh, piece of wire jammed in there or like a twig or something, um, I'm going to, I'm going to guess that they're uh, just shoddily done to make people think that it's fine. 
Uh, if there's anything connected to them or, I don't know, like a, a stick holding up the ceiling or something like that, I'm going to be watching for that too. I think yeah. either way, I'm probably going to poke it with a stick. From <laughs> Poke it with a stick. You see, like, it's like two stone doors here, right? And you've got two big, you know, like, handles, right? And then, but it would be on a hinge, but you're able to look and see that the hinges have actually been removed from the door. So something other than the hinges are actually holding the door in place. But you don't see anything oh, okay. on this side doing it. Okay. Am I able to see through the other side of the door, or they're both completely closed? Uh, they are completely closed. Okay. Are there right, any, yeah. like, footprints or kind of looking around, are there any, like, alternate paths that might have been carved out or tunneled through around this particular gate? No, you're uh, you're really confident uh, looking at it that the, looks like there's no other way uh, in at least this way, as far as you can tell. I find this a bit of a conundrum. This is either an alarm or a trap. I don't like either. Mm. What do you have on you? Do I have on me? I've got a hammer, wooden spikes. Uh, I've got a sling, uh, ammunition, and stones for the sling. Tiny little pebbles. That's a sling. What's the sling made out of? A little piece uh, of Walmart trash bag. That'd probably, where, yeah. Where I'm from. That's probably what the mice make them out of. Yeah, <laughs> probably that. Some sewing, sewing uh, thread that I found. Yeah. Fishing line. Fishing line, yeah. <laughs> well, if someone made a trap and there's a large stone door in front of us, I, I kind of feel like trying to move stone, that's, that's sort of beyond our capability. We're just two small mice. What if we were to, and, and hear me out, just a thought, what if we were to try to use your sling and trigger that cheese trap we saw earlier? Okay. Right. I think yeah. we could probably use your sling and rocks and, and just get a nice fair distance back. And if you can hit the cheese and, and hit that wiring and the mechanism that I found in the cheese, it could at least spring something or move something or do something to where we could learn more about, you know, what's going on. Worst comes to worst, it flings the cheese, we can then pick it up, and if we need poison cheese, well, now we have some. <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, go back and I'll uh, sling a rock at it. I'm a good safetist. All right. Um, this will determine simply how quickly you can do it. Uh, you can make a dexterity save. Okay. Let's see. Dex. Oh, it didn't like my pressing that. Maybe I've got that in the wrong spot. Let's put that there. Nope. Doesn't like it. Okay. Roll 1d20. And oh, six. Nice. Okay. Uh, first trap. And it hits the cheese. The cheese, you can see it. All of a sudden, it makes this terrible sound. Like an explosive like sound. And like the, the earth and stone like explodes up from it. And this huge mechanism that it's connected to shatters the, the, the cheese and the rock. You actually see the rock, the little stone just gets shattered by it. And uh, this massive metal contraption uh, has slammed down on the cheese. Did you see that? I, that was amazing. I think we should hide, though. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, and then, you know, we just sort of scurry and probably grab, like, the nearest wall. Um, as this all happened, I mean, did this, like, shake the room we're in at all, or is it just all just sort of a self-contained 
mechanism? Um, it shook, I would say, like the air itself, like, right? Like, you know, uh, you can hear the whoosh and the explosive clap of this thing, and then the, the sound vibration that booms into your ears and hurts your ears. But the stump, no, it didn't. Uh, but then you start to hear voices on the other side of the stone. And uh, you can hear them, uh, like, cackling. And it sounds like they're, uh, like, making fun of one another. One per- one of them in particular. And, um, and laughing. And uh, approaching the stone. But after triggering that, the stone didn't move, shift, anything like that. It's still very much in the same... Sh- state that it was in with the two closed doors yeah okay and you you guys try to hide i have an idea of whether i might want to do something foolish and then run away on the uh, on the beetle but i'm thinking while they're out the door is to try to heave the door down on the other side and run um, <laughs> before we draw attention to ourselves let me now after this thing closed down on this cheese is it now possible for me to grab any portion of, of the cheese and, and pocket it? You can absolutely get, uh, let me see, because it's only part of it because it like destroyed most of the cheese. So you get 10 pips worth of cheese. 10 pips of cheese. Nice. All right. Like you say, hide. I'm going to do something stupid. I'm deeply Wait, how them. stupid is stupid? I'm going to push the door and squish them. You can make... I hope. Make a strength check with advantage. Oh, thanks. Okay. Um, so that's I roll two d20. Uh, yep. I think it is. Roll. And you take the lower of the two in this game, right? Come on. Yeah, that's an eight. Right. So an eight. one is a one is a match. Uh, so like you, how do you do this? Like if you're like your little mouse and you're gonna give it your best, you like charge in on your beetle and and charge into it like a cavalry or what do you what do you do to get this thing to ram past the hinges and go the other way yeah i'm thinking of uh going up with the beetle um and then kind of running towards the door and my hope is to kind of turn it around get him well actually no i won't turn him around i think i could turn it around well enough uh kind of rear him up to push from higher up and then immediately run the other way um Oh boy, um, you uh, you do that, and like you slam the door, and you hear like like and 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 uh, puzzle just like rears up, um, and uh, and falls back on you actually. Um, make a uh, a dex save actually. Oh, okay. With advantage. Oh, perfect. Let's see if that would be too bad. Let's go. Oh. Two D twenty. Come on! Oh! Oh, nice, nice rolling tonight. Um, if this were D and D, it'd be a bad night. <laughs> but it's <laughs> terrible. But it's going well. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, you're able to like, it, you, he rears up, but you get him back like a, like almost cowboy style, and you bring him back down, and you're. You ride him around. There's this explosive clapping sound again, and you hear screaming and um, uh, crunching. And um, you see one of the contraptions that you triggered on the other side unexpectedly for those on the other side that they didn't know was going to happen. And there are a bunch of dead rats on the ground. Rats. Wow. Okay. You you kind of, as you kind of you know knock the door down. If if you look back at August, he's just sort of looking at you, just deadpan, like you know when you said something stupid. He's just a mouth little, just agape, like, what did you do? <laughs> and I believe that worked. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, what do you do now? Uh, 
I guess. Are you okay? I mean, did you, did that hurt when you you? It it didn't, but it scared me deeply. <laughs> I'm still I'm... scared, like right now. Like, wh- what? Okay, but okay. Um, well, those those fellows definitely don't look too too great. Um, and and he just his curiosity is kind of getting a hold, and he just kind of peers in ever so slightly. He's got his torch still in hand and just kind of looking around to get a better view of, of now what we see beyond these two, well, previously two stone doors. Yeah, the, so it's clear that the doors were propped up by one of these like giant snapping spring-mounted trap mechanisms, and uh, it had been moved from its hinges so that if anybody tried to open the door, it would have sprung the trap and pushed the door the other way. But because this guy was clever, he rammed the door as they were going to check it and then set the trap off on them instead. And so uh, the trap went off and I rolled for damage uh, and it instantly squished all these rats. And they're like squished up in this mechanism now. And the door has crushed them. Wow. Um, as we kind of glance down at what used to be rats, I mean, is there anything salvageable from their, from their now rat corpses or did it all just kind of get smushed and flattened? Oh, absolutely. Uh, they all have, uh, so three of them have, um, or all three of them have, um, uh, weapons. And what it is, is it's one of those old fashioned, like razor blades, you know, like the old fashioned one. Oh, but it's yeah. Been snapped in half. So it's like for a mouse, it's a little cleaver. But it's like part of an old fashioned razor blade. And they do D6 damage. Okay. And then uh, they each have uh, a common amount of wealth on them. So let's see how much, how many pips you get. That's the wrong dice. How did that happen? Sorry. Right. That wasn't that great. Uh, you find 90 pips. 90? Huh? Okay. And then, uh, when you come out here, there's this large uh, courtyard that opens up around the stump. It just towers up above you. And uh, the mice of Stumpsville have built um, little mouse houses, uh, mouse holes, uh, up on the, uh, the edge of the stump, up on, like, stilts and onto the walls. And there's ladders leading up to these houses, uh, there's this dark pond uh, in the center. Uh, it's deep and dark, but you think you see something shining and glinting off somewhere in the center of it. And, uh, there's an open tunnel over here, and then there's a door. Mm. Up on all these houses and stuff, I mean, do we see any kind of signs of life, any kind of lights or skittering or anything like that that would indicate that, you know, there's people here? You, um, the only thing you hear, and you see little, uh, little tiny containers of mouse alcohol, like rat, like, uh, like I would say maybe like diluted poison. Um, they were drunk and they were partying and you're able to tell that from looking at them. Um, and, uh, you get an indication that more of these things are around and probably partying because you hear like little toots and cackles off in the distance. But other than that, it is still and cool here and quiet. So, I know we're mouse, or mice, mices, mice, yeah, meese, In- mice, meese. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you described what we just squished as, as rats. Um, is there like a, a un- a dislike or a, a war between the mice and the rats or are they kinfolk or what's the relationship there? Yeah. Rats are bigger and generally meaner um, and scary. Okay. So we could potentially be looking at a gang of rats causing the trouble here in Stumpwood. Yeah. I think, uh, mm. I'm not it's like I, I'm, I'm thinking like uh in game it's like well uh not she he, he uh blah, 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 blah. shim's not too sure we should press forward 
um, because now we know what's happened and it almost does seem like a better idea to go back and get reinforcements to retake the place. But at the same time, it's like, well, now I out of games. So I don't want to do some exploring. <laughs> I mean, we've already got 90 pips. I mean, how many more can we can we grab and carry um, as part of our before we head back and, and, and you know, get the necessary help we'll need. And maybe um, someone here knows what happened and why. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got to find a survivor. You're right. Um, what do you think? Should we check out over here? Or should we take a peek at one of these things? So you said the houses are pretty much kind of up, right? Like we'd have to do some climbing. But then you also said that there's like a, a pool with something glinting appearing in it. Yeah, there's this deep, dark pond in the center of Stumpsville. And uh, there's something glinting, shining from the center of it. Um, the houses, they just have, like, ladders uh, going up. All you'd need to do is just go up them if you wanted to check any of the houses out. Hmm. All right. I will start climbing. Um, try to keep an eye up at the top of the the ladders with your sling if you see any anything not so nice coming at towards or down the ladder please cover me with your sling and then once i'm at the top i can make sure that you have a safe journey up we can kind of have the beetles kind of cover our um bottom of the ladder if we've got something to to tie them off or, or keep them here probably for the best okay perfect all right which one do you check out um we'll probably just go with whichever one's closest to us from from our current location so probably is that i guess five all right Um, do you go up to five? Yes, and I'll start climbing my way up there the and, and head up there and see what I run into. Um, okay, so you climb up the, the, the ladder, no problem. You get up here and it's a little mouse hole that's very well decorated. Um, and uh, when you look inside, you see that it's empty inside. This is a typical mouse house. Uh, there's furniture that's been turned up against the wall. Uh, there's a nice painting on the wall depicting a Stumpsville Summer Festival and uh, bunting festooning houses. There's a statue that's inside, and that's it. Okay. I look around and I say, I think the coast is clear. Come on up. That way you can kind of see what we're working with here um, and, and kind of start thinking through what we may want to investigate or take with us here. Okay. Yeah, I hit up. Up goes uh, Shim. Yep, and Shim, you see the same thing. Okay. With the uh, advantage up here, can we see a little better into what's uh, in the pool there? It's even harder to see what's in the pool. It's very dark and deep there. It's just like kind of glimmering gold look, you know, something in the center. But you can see deeper down into this, and you get the impression that the sounds of tooting and hollering are coming from that from that uh, area. You can also make a wheel check if you're trying to use your mouse ears. Yeah. Okay, an eight. Nice. Okay. You hear something very briefly from over here. You hear a... Like a... Like, okay. like a... Yeah, I point that out to uh, August. I heard something. 
Mm. Hugs across. That probably didn't go through my headset. Oh, okay, so, no, I missed that. <laughs> she said, I uh, heard something go, tsh -tsh -tsh, but then nothing after that. Oh, yeah. Like a, it sounds like a skittering sound, and then maybe like a light thumping. Yeah. So, since we're where we're at, I think we can kind of duck into the house that we're in. I want to, because he had mentioned a, a dresser had been overturned, and then there was a statue. Now, when you say statue, is it like a full-sized, bigger than us, our size statue, or is it like a small bust? What what kind of statue are we looking at with that? Yeah, like a full-size mouse statue. Okay. And anything striking about it? I mean, is it in the same state of disrepair as the, the statues down there were, or is it in like fuller form? Yeah, it's in full form. Uh, it looks like just the person's belongings. As far as gotcha. you can tell by searching the house, there's nothing special about it. Uh, it's just been vacated. Um, their furniture's been tossed up against a wall nearby, and and then and that's that's pretty much it. Of the broken furniture, anything like shattered, broken off? I mean, are there like pieces of things laying around, or is it just like old dusty stuff that's just kind of been pushed to the wall and forgotten? It looks like it's been pushed up against the wall uh, very roughly, and then just left there. Like, um, uh, it looks like somebody came in here and tossed all the furniture to one side of the room. Gotcha. Okay, and then I guess my last little question about this room of that statue are there any pieces that appear to be like loose broken removable or is it all pretty yeah connected? It's, it's all connected yeah okay always looking for something to scavenge um all right so that skittering you hear your beetle that... could probably scavenge the statue you just have to figure out how to get it down wondering if we can uh use it in a in a fight if we uh like say say we're over here and uh they come out here and they have a uh, a uh sorry another statue over here we can drop it down and then if we can scurry i <laughs> think gorilla tactics do you have any uh do you have any fishing line or tackle or anything no that would be great yeah Okay. I was thinking about putting the, the statue on the beetle and then smacking the beetle and letting the statue ride in the darkness appearing as somebody, but oh. I don't know how much that would buy us or, or how much effort that would be or if it would be worth it. What I'm thinking on that skittering, though, if you've still got your sling, you could potentially try to just, like, pop something over there and see if you can get someone to poke their head out or something. But at the same time, I don't know if we want to do that, if it's something that we don't want its head being poked out, you know? <laughs> yeah. I could do that. We can we can hide in the house and just kind of watch over there. <laughs> People would be spying on each Wouldn't side. Wouldn't you have a, a sight and a vantage point from the house? A sight and vantage point into the house? Yeah, um, so from the house we're in, if we were to do this crazy ass plan of swinging a rock at uh, six where they, the skittering was heard, would we be able to see from five what may be up or around or coming out of six? You you can't see what's inside of six, uh, but you, you would be able to see if something moved around or came out. If it did that, you know. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think with my, my inventory, we're, we're kind of, I like thinking creatively, but I don't know that I have much to think creatively with at the moment. I think we may have to just start kind of easing our way towards some of these other places and, and see what else we can find. Yeah, if you, if you all threw a rock, you're certain you could. Um, if it stirred something, you would be able to tell if that's something you want to do. That's as you asked earlier, and that's up to you all, of course. I'm wondering, it could be uh, another mouse, it could be a lookout. 
some horrible bug waiting for us. It's hungry. Mm. Trying to think like a mouse would think. Like, oh, it's you probably are dangerous. Totally thinking about it's like mice. It's oh yeah, bad. yeah. For for this game to to be mice related, I never realized how nervous I was until I actually played a mouse, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> this just feels awesome. I should just be a mouse all the time. <laughs> Um, He's going to kill you. Oh, no. <laughs> all right. I think I think we should just go for it. I think at this point, maybe at least get to four and see if we can get any kind of sight vantage. Maybe the noise we make starting in that direction will cause six to stir. What do you think? Yeah, I like that. All right. I will head down the ladder and then move towards four. All right. You uh, climb the ladder up to four? Um, yeah, with the same logic and plan that you're covering me with your sling in case we, we piss anything off when we move. Yeah, I got you, uh, got you covered. You get did up you want to me to, uh, oh, to go down here and, and do it, or did you want me to stay up here with it, the... Uh... I would think I would move down, um, okay. cover your move down, and then you can cover my move up. All and right, perfect. Once I'm up, we can determine if there's any concern on on you moving up. After we kind of see what I can see once I'm on four and kind of looking around for a bit. All right. Try to keep a particular eye on number six. All right. When you uh, climb up to four and you take a look at, around, you see a more Spartan um, and uh, more lightly adorned mouse house with a hole going into the stump. And um, you see, as you look inside, there's a window here. There's a window here, right? Yeah, there's a window here. So you look inside the window and you can clearly see inside the house. There's no one in. There's no one in the house. There's nothing in the house or no, no body in the house. But this place has been trashed. It's been, stuff's been like broken and furniture's like broken and, and, and shattered and thrown against the walls. And uh, there's pots and pans on the floor. A lot of them look very nice. Uh, they look like they're made of, they're very fine pots and pans. And then you see dead rats live uh, scrawled on the wall. Dead rats live. Yeah. I immediately look back to the three rats that we killed earlier. Yeah, I'll draw them, actually. That's funny. <laughs> it looks like this. Dead rats live. I love that. Oh my god. Yeah, like I said, immediately just glance back to those dead rats and see if I can see any kind of stirring, twitching, anything. Nope. They're definitely dead rats that are also dead rats. Alright. Based on that, I very nervously sort of gesture you up like, alright, let's, let's see what's in here. Um, and when you go in there, um, Shim, you see the same thing. Uh, and it's very obvious when you look inside that there's nothing in here. There's nothing of significance except it's been ransacked and there are really nice pots and pans on the floor. And everything's just like shattered everywhere. When I see dead rats live, I immediately turn around and look nervously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my right. god. Um... So I guess we've got a door. This very dangerous tunnel, number six, which might have, well, has something inside of it, and mystery door. And then, I guess... But I think that that... I think that that should have a... Yeah, that should have a dynamic lighting barrier. I'm going to fix that. For our, like inventories carrying situations i mean are we wearing like backpacks that are holding our things or we just have what we can strap to our bodies how does that kind of work in this one um you can pretty much carry whatever but like um 
Are you asking for flavor or are you asking for like the limitations of what you could carry? I'm trying to understand limitations, so ah, okay, yeah, I'm so thinking around these pots and pans, if they're nice, if I can, you know, grab a pot and a pan or something. Um, you could totally carry those pots and pans. Um, uh, you are limited by your inventory slots, and I think you have six of them, right? So if you're carrying, and then you have something on your main paw and on your body, right? You've got okay. body slots, paw slots. You've got a main paw and an off paw, body slot, and then six pack slots, I think. Gotcha. So your pots and pans would take up one slot. Okay. And then, like, we, if we were playing in person, we would literally, like, have a little thing and draw, like, a little pot and pan and then put it on there, on your thing. Nice. I just did that. <laughs> nice. Who's got the I pots and pans? I love these things. All right. Who, who has the pots and pans? I can carry them just in case I come up with a reason to need a pan. Um, when you look at them, you only find one decent pan, actually, after looking at it. But it's worth ten pips. Nice. Pan. Okay. Ten pips. All right. Excellent. Now what do y'all do? Okay, so we've got... Does the uh, the ladder here go directly in front of the uh, the cave there? Uh, no, it's like on the wall of the stump, you know, because it goes up to this uh, this little house on the wall. This okay. is this this is also in the wall in a different place. Okay, I just didn't want to mess around dimensions. with that. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, door number six. Well, from where we're at, kind of being perched under six and above three i guess as we're kind of looking down at three from four i mean do we have a better view at all of what this could be or is the darkness just kind of causing it to just be murkier you could make a willpower check for six but looking into three it just is dark water but you're more clearly can see that something gold and shiny is at the bottom of, th of uh, the pond okay you any good at swimming? I got wet once. Hmm. Smelled funny. I don't feel like swimming. Um. Okay. I, I think our best bet would probably be we neither move down that cave or, or check check six. Right, yeah, let's... Uh... I wonder if we should peek at the cave before we go to six, just in case. You can make a willpower check for six, um, if you wanted to try to see from where you're at. Both of you can if you want. Right, 1d20. Oh, oh. streak has ended. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I did a seven on will, so, yeah. Did that pass? Yes, it did. Nice. Um... You look over here, and you don't hear anything, but then, in this window right here, you can see cobwebs festooning the window. I wonder if that skittering's like a, like a spider or something. And then you hear... <laughs> From here? No, from uh, six from the house. Oh. You, you still hear like laughing and jeering and tooting coming from this door, and you hear it more clearly now. Hmm. Now I'm concerned for someone's safety. Yeah. I'm trying to determine if that, if it's discretion or valor that I, that I want to go with here. Yeah, maybe now would be a good time to throw that rock. There's a guard in there, or if there's a spider holding them. 
Or if they're just trapped and they'll go, huh? Yeah. I think it'd be worthwhile just to kind of see what we what we get back out of that. Right. I'm gonna. Little Shem's gonna throw a rock with his sling. All right. The D20 um, it? it works. Uh, you're able to throw a rock, no problem, to get to the house. Uh, I am going to make my own save. Are you aiming at like the door, just the the house exterior, or directly at a window to see if you can shatter it? Uh, more the exterior. Maybe, like, right by the door. Gotcha. Something oh, yeah. just kind of make a thud. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at that, um, you actually piss something off inside of it. It doesn't know where it came from, but you see this huge thing, like, claw its way out of the window and then kind of indignantly look back into the house wherever that thing hit where the rock hit and you see this big uh, giant spider oh hear, do I ever not like that and you hear oh. mumbling uh, coming from whoops come sorry I, I don't mean to ping that um, you hear mumbling coming from inside the house mm. no no I think with the amount of people that have left, I, uh, I'm going to think that that's a rat in there. What do you think? I don't know. If the rats came through here and are, are cheering, you, you would think that they might have dealt with this if it was going after their own people. I'm wondering if it was one of one of the folks here in town. Hmm. I think we're gonna have to go do a rescue. I, I would agree, for whatever reason. Ah, <laughs> morals. <laughs> okay, even okay. if it is a rat, maybe maybe he'll be grateful if we save him from this thing and and can help us kind of yeah. understand what the, what they're doing here. Well, if he can't see us, I'm gonna try to donk him with a with another rock. Oh, by the way, I'm also going to say that oh. your beetles have six slots. Oh, oh awesome. perfect. Right, because that makes sense. And and that's kind of what I'm thinking next. So, all right, if you're going to fling something at him and try to get his attention, maybe maybe after you, you peg him, I can, I can use my pots and pans and just make a lot of noise and see if I can, like, bring him down and we can then use the beetles to help us do whatever we're going to do to this thing. Yeah, I'm wondering if because that'll attract the rats. But they also won't know where we are, and we'll be able oh, to see how many there are. The rats, then we can just run in the other direction and hide, and maybe they'll just have to deal with them for us. All right. Yeah. All right. And a, a rock I whip. So your plan is to try to get it to come here, make a bunch of noise, and try to lure it away from from here to to lure it out, and then you're yeah lure it back gonna, to the direction we came over to where our beetles are are kind of at. You're gonna try to have your beetles. By the way, you can have your beetles like right here if you want, like because this is a pond. It's just in the center, right? So you could have okay, um, perfect. Yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, if that's what you want. Okay. Uh, all right, so just roll for damage. Ooh, for damage, perfect. Okay. Yep, you do not roll to roll. hit in this game. It automatically One, hits. D six, four. Uh, four damage. Um, let's see here. Uh, you kill it outright, actually. Oh wow! And it curls up and falls, and crunches to the ground. Uh, and then you uh, let me see actually what happens to the next one. And it pisses off the other one, and it comes out. And uh, felt its will save, so it's also going to clamber down and start coming toward you all. And so your plan succeeded. Um, you said you're clanging your pot and making noise. Also going to see yeah. what the dead rats do. They failed their will save, and so... 
uh, several of them start to come up. What's going on here? Oh, and then they see this like these like beetles and a spider and stuff, and uh, they get ready to try to fight it. What would you all do now? Well, they're gonna fight the spider. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's see how that goes. Um, all right, we're yeah, gonna hide. We should or... let them fight. Yeah, yeah let's, uh... that I'll stop making noise and see if we can just kind of duck back into four and just kind of see how this goes down. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I like it. You guys, because they won't a, know the Beatles. Make a Dex check with or a Dex save with advantage. Dex save. Oh, I'm bad at these. To see if you can hide without getting caught. Oh wow. <laughs> oh dear. Did I ever not hide? You like trip and fall all over all the stuff, and they hear you, and uh, yeah. But then the spider is gonna like. Uh, it's probably gonna attack your beetles. So uh, I think. Um, let me see real quick here. deck save to act first so um that's what we're gonna do so everybody can make a deck save and if you pass you get to act first and otherwise they get to act and then we just go one after the other hey three this time all right where was that before all right what do you all do (laughs) you're able to act first Uh, but they definitely know where you're at the spider's about to attack these beetles these dead rats you don't know what they're gonna do yet uh they definitely notice us. I think I'm going to try to uh, throw uh, whip a whip of rock at this guy. All right. Roll for damage. At the spider yeah. or the rats? The, uh, the rats. I'm hoping that our beetles can hold their own. Um, well, can we tell from this vantage point if they appear to be like like what the rats look like? I mean, do they look like normal normal rats that are just mean towards mice? Or do they look like dead rats that are just they're a gang oh yeah they're oh, very rats. roguish rats. okay they're, they're gonna kick they're around rats. And they, like, they even have I like a whole ghost. they have a whole thing they've been working on you know like but like yeah they're like uh you know they're a gang of rats. they come out snapping yeah like snapping really together. yeah like, oh yeah. my gosh okay yep that's great right it's you your rat, your rat. Never, you're never going to win with musical gangs. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, you fling at that rat. Uh, and a D6. There you got a six, six on a D6, right? Yeah. Uh, you uh, crack him right in the head and he falls over dead. Shim is a bloody menace. <laughs> <laughs> Box do work, man. Old blooded. Uh, <laughs> all right. Shim. Good. Settle down. <laughs> what? So I climbed a ladder to get up on the floor. Would like jumping off of the balcony I'm on? Would that do damage? Like how high up are we? Yeah, you are pretty high up. You could either jump into the pond uh, and cushion your fall that way, but then you'd need to swim. You know, you'd need to use like a whole turn to get back. Is what I'm going to say. Although I don't think the spider is going to come into the water. I could be wrong. The rats might. Um, Sorry. Uh, I shouldn't cut you off. Yeah, I think I'm just going to kind of tuck back into the doorway. I have no ranged weaponry on me whatsoever, so I'm just going to kind of tuck back for now and uh, see how this plays out. Maybe you could throw a chair down. Oh, oh yeah. Is yeah. there anything, like, can I scavenge oh, right in the house? Yeah, you'll do, it, you'll do it impaired, and you can only throw okay. it at the spider. Okay. So impaired. So what you roll what a D4 that damage. D4 damage. D4 damage. Okay. I'm throwing random junk and do wow a four. Oh my goodness. Okay. Awesome. Um, you uh, badly hurt this the spider. Nice. Crack it. And you Our, can see uh... Icker coming out of it, and it rears up on its legs. Whoa. Would the beetles be aggressive towards the spider, or would they kind of be more like a horse and just kind of try to back off first? So they're, they're your pets, so you can use them. Uh, you guys can command them however you want. Okay. Puzzle. Get him. Puzzle. Okay, puzzle. Uh, he rolls uh, 
with his little beetle snout to hit and crushes the spider through, runs it through. And uh, beetle comes out the other side. And then uh, what do you do with uh, Skippy, the beetle? I just say Skippy charge and and hope that Skippy starts running towards the rats that I, I pointed at That's over there. I'm sorry. Uh, he, he does, and he hits a rat, and now it's the rat's turn. Okay. And uh, the rat is going to roll d6, and it kills Skippy outright. Oh, chops great. Skippy's head off with its razor blade, and then this other rat bounds forward to to her puzzle. Puzzle no. And it kills puzzle. Oh. And this uh, just got intense. Now it's your yeah, last it's turn. Turned into a tragedy. Alright, let's uh vengeance for for puzzle. Here comes a rock at his head. Oh. Good goals tonight. My goodness. Oh, what'd you get? Six damage. What, who'd you shoot at? Oh, this guy here. Okay, you kill the guy him. who's who dare kill Puzzle. Yeah, now he's he's dead as well. All right. And and are they in like more debris throwing range, or do I need to start to descend to do anything here? Uh, you'd need to descend to do anything here. Okay. I just kind of look back and I'm like, cover me your best best you can, and I just start descending down the ladder with no other option. Um, I don't think you're in range uh, combat tax maybe it's just narrative and you don't have to descend down if you don't want to based on this information but I do think that you're outside of range to get to him in one turn I think we're kind of safe up here too because he's going to do a lot of work to get up here that's that's fair. Maybe I will just kind of hang tight on the ladder and and just wait then um, and let you kind of keep pelting him with rocks. And if he charges after us, I can I can get creative and bash him on his way up. That'll work. He uh he looks at you all and he's like, "You filthy mice! I'll be back." And he sees what's going on. And he runs away. But he's still snapping, right? Um. Uh snaps rapidly in retreat oh yeah yeah he does it as he leaves like you know and he backs away into the darkness like dancing uh let me see if they can figure this out let me figure out a couple things for these folks actually it will just take them some time or is it going to take more than that let me see what i got to work with here They're going to have to try to do a couple of things to be able to pull this off. Um, they, uh, yeah, they, uh, they go down into, uh, into a hole. Yeah. Mice are freaking intense, man. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's very lethal, right? Like you don't want to die, so you want to cheat. It says it right here. Like this is this is definitely sums it up. It says um, it says uh, uh, dirty. How to play? It says um, play to win, fight dirty. You know, like work together. Dice are dangerous. Don't don't even end up in a situation where you use dice. Ask tons of questions. Play to win, fight dirty. Like cheat you know you're a mouse yeah so that y'all are winning you're winning mouse ridder so far <laughs> you winning son oh my gosh all right so i think we bought ourselves at least a little bit of time but i don't know how much or if he scurried off i don't know how many friends he has either i mean do you think we should go and and at least get whatever we can off of off of the corpses of our best beetles and, and see what else they might have been carrying. I mean, do you think it would be worthwhile to, to check six at this point, or should we start? And you hear a and no, oh, help. Oh, from six. Hmm? You I think hear we like should a go moment. for it. From six. Tell you what, how about 
Oh, the muffling. Uh, right. Oh, there's still muffling in six. We, we, yeah. we see who's in there. I'm wondering if, uh, if you go by the door or vice versa, however this goes, if one of us goes by the door here, just in case the rats come, uh, if, if we can make it up to six without being seen by anybody else, then the other person could be like, oh no, hurry, they're coming and, and, and run. And then you can escape and hide, but I'll also be alerted and know not to, not to move a mouse whisker. I like that. Let's, let's kind of proceed like that. Let's just move very stealthily, you know, cover me the best you can with the sling. I will make my way up and, and just see how it, how it goes. Okay. So I just very stealthily and carefully. Oh wait, I leave my pots and pans up here so I can <laughs> stealthily and carefully, and then <laughs> just kind of move and and ascend to six. And as I arrive, I just sort of kind of try to barely open that door and uh, see what I see. Um. You hear more muffled sounds and sounds of excitement coming from here. Uh, from here, you think you hear a rumbling noise. And then as you approach, uh, as you approach, you climb up the ladder and you go in here, you see uh, uh, dark cobwebs uh, festooning the windows and the doorway. And you have to, do you have like a, a fish hook or what do you have? Like... Let's see. I have a musical instrument, um, a disguise kit. Some torches, some rations, uh, poisoned cheese. I left my pots and pans back there. What's so, your weapon? Uh, I'm using a hammer, so oh, you probably have a... like a stone hooked yeah. to a stick. Yeah, you you have you have to use that to kind of make your way through, and then you find two mice inside that are um, like uh, stuck into the cobwebs. And uh, one of them, um, actually starting with this fellow here, um, this person you have heard of, uh, but you've never met him before. He is the great hero mouse, Panier. And, uh, but he's tied up. He, it is said that Panier once uh, faced off against a cat itself. And, uh, but you've never met Panier before, but you've heard of him. And then the other person you have heard of and you know quite well, this is Rockfurt. And uh, Rockfurt is your, um, actually, it, you have a long and tumultuous relationship with Rockfurt. What, what is, what's your relationship with Rockfurt? He's, uh, I'll mm. tell you that, and because you know him well, uh, he means well. But he's young, and he's always trying to compete at everything. And also is kind of a bit of a kleptomaniac and just constantly takes things. He's He's got, like, pockets full of crap, like, all the time. Seeds, bundles of twine. He's got a little aviator hat that's made of electric tape. And um, what, how do you know Rockford? Well, you know see. him, like, really well. August is is probably a, a one of the the mouse guard that that kind of helps cover this this road normally. So that's why he's begrudgingly chosen to to be dragged on this recon mission. And we'll say that a Rockford is probably one of his fellow guardsmen's pain in the ass little brother who's always trying to be bigger than he can be and doing these crazy little things and uh, going on these adventures. And as I see him, I just shake my head and I'm like, oh, Rockford. Um, yeah, your little brother, uh, is trying to be a big hero and be like his big brother and it's just causing problems. And, uh, as you find Rockford in here, um, and also, uh, the hero mouse, um, uh, the hero mouse pannier, uh, two more rats emerge, um, looking for you. Merge from the cave below. Yeah. Um, okay. Am I aware that they have emerged, or I'm probably still pretty focused on what I'm seeing? That's a good. That is a good point, and uh, I think we actually roll for that. Um, 
Let's see here. Uh, combat. Each side uh, make a deck save to act before your opponents. Ah, this is funny. Because you're a mouse, you're always surprised. So you're always making that surprise check. Like there's never a... <laughs> That's it. That's the only check. So instead of even... So in BX, there's a surprise check and you roll a D6. Um, and both sides do it. And then you roll for initiative, right? After the surprise round. But because you're a mouse... You just have surprise. You're just surprised or not. That's it. That's the only thing that happens. There's no initiative. So uh, you would make a dex check to see if you're surprised or not. I am surprised. Oh no. They say, there they are. And they like start climbing up to try to fight you all. Oh my goodness. And they're able to act first. Oh no. You guys were in the house still, right? And uh, yes. one of them gets up the ladder uh, just within range of uh, August, and he's going to attack August. Uh, and August, you get slashed with a razor blade for one damage. Oh. And uh, they're able to make it kind of up on the platform. Uh, I think. Let me, go, let me look at that one more time, actually. I lost it. Where did it go? Oh, it, it's a little... It collapses for some reason. That's so useless. Okay. No, they can't make it up on the platform. So that was kind of a dumb move on their part. Okay. And then it's uh, it's Earl's turn. Okay. Here comes a rock. That's uh, the guy at the top, like the very top of the ladder. Six. Come on, big numbers. Oops, that didn't work. Six. A big number. Five! Five for nice. the one at the top? Yeah. Uh, let me see if that's what that does to him. Uh, you uh, you kill him. He falls off the ladder dead. Oh, does it hit his buddy on the way down? Uh, let me see if he can uh, succeed on a dex check. Uh, he got a 13. Let me turn that down just a second. Uh, he failed, so he also falls off the ladder. Let me see how many feet he fell. It's not feet, it's inches, but same thing, whatever. So he takes d6 damage from falling. Splat! He takes two damage. He's already wounded, uh, so he's badly wounded now. All right. And then um, uh, your little brother, um, Panier, uh, or not Panier, Rockfort, he's going to jump... I'll get him. And he's going to try to run forward and attack him. No. I think he'll make it. Let me see what what uh, Rockford has. Let's see. He has a little sling. Um, so that's all he's got. He's got like a little slingshot. And uh, he kills him because he only had one hit point left. Wow. Oh, Rockford. Wow. That was intense. And then... It's really, uh, really frightening. Rockford comes up and he's like, I didn't need you to come and, and help me. I had it. That was pretty obvious by the way you were tied up. That was... That was I just... Great. I um, had it in hand and then like Panniers like... Well done, heroes. Uh, we we um, the cheese processing plant though is it, there are still dead rats left, and they've I have terrible news. They've let loose the I I, I have no doubt because I can hear it from here. They've let loose the guardian snake. We used the guardian snake to ward off rats, but well now they've let it loose and it's angry. That's a problem. It is a problem. A lot of people could get hurt. And never mind the fact that why Jack and Ernie... I'm sorry, Jack. Jack is still back there and we have to get him. This Who's Jack? Be, 
And then Panier puts his mouse, like little hands on his hips, and he's like, this may be my last battle. But I knew this day would come. Jack. Jack is the, he's the, uh, the, the steward of the cheese processing plant. We need a clever plan. What did you do when you killed the cat? Hmm. Everyone knows the story. Ah, yes. Well, I was, it was in my younger days. Why, three months ago. And I, uh, I, I, <laughs> I did a backflip in the air and then pierced the, the, the cat in the back of the head. Uh, it was more surprise and, and daring than it was cunning, really. Uh, foolish, actually. So you see the, the older brother look kind of cross August's face, looking down at Rockford, like, don't you even get ideas right now. That is yeah, not how we're going to yeah, do this at yeah, all. Rockford's like, <gasps> like, his eyes are wide, like, oh, that, that's cool. That's what we need to do. Uh, okay, I don't like dumb luck when it comes to spiders, much less snakes. And you see him just visibly contort at the sheer mention of, of snakes. Um, I hate snakes, so this is very easy to play. Um, <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, we've we've been lucky so far. Uh, what what do you think? Hmm. Well, if we could set some sort of trap up, hmm. maybe if we could lure the dead rats to be the bait for us. We could solve two problems with one. But someone would need to sneak inside and remove whatever is barricading the remaining dead rats to the snake. Ah, and it would be a great sacrifice. But we could, if we could, if we get in touch with Jack, Jack could open the vats of the hot cheese and pour the hot cheese down in and flood the snake inside. Perhaps. It would require uh, all of us to do different things. Someone would need to sneak past, get the attention of the dead rats, open the door. Uh, someone would need to activate the mouse wheel uh, to uh, activate the pumps. And someone would have to get Jack's attention. And Jack would have to open the valve. And probably someone would need to distract the snake long enough for us to do it. Do we know if Jack is even okay? I mean, has anyone seen him? No. I hope he's okay. We have to try, though. Hmm. Let's see. I could, uh... Lock the, get rid of the barricade for the rats. Could pretend uh, pretend to be a, a rat. You guys, uh, I could be pretend to be one of the other rats. Say, ah, the mice, the mice are attacking. I have a disguise kit, so oh. that that's not a horrible idea to at least sneak in and try to get the attention of the the, the rats. Now, earlier, I want to say that. We heard them drinking um, from from anywhere that we've been along. Are there any remnants or traces of what they were drinking um, anywhere that we've passed that we might have seen, you know, bottles of, of rat hooch anywhere? Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. It indi- there's It's really clear that there's, like, rat hooch everywhere. Broken and bottles and stuff like that. For this, I mean... It, can we test to see if it's flammable the way normal alcohol is? Or is this just, like, more just not oh, so flammable? It's totally flammable. Absolutely. Flammable okay. is always good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, if we could figure out some plan, bring it all together. If we prevail today, um, why... And he puts his arm around Rockford. Rockford and I... Uh, we climbed up here to take the town statue, and we pushed it over there into the pond yonder. And why? It seems Stumpsville is ended. 
So perhaps we could bring it to Oaks Grove and they could benefit from it. It's it's made of golden leaf. And uh, you'd know that like a whole statue of that would be worth... Um, uh, it would be worth 600 pips. Wow. And, uh, yeah. And all of the remaining wealth that I've gathered in my adventuring days is... I also tossed it down into that pond yonder. 140 pips worth. So, I'm concerned for Jack. Deeply so. I'd like to know he's okay. But at the same time... I just, I wonder the value of trying to take on a snake with just who we have here. Do you think it would be possible to disguise one of us, sneak in through the rats, see if we can find Jack, and confirm if he's alive, and then if he is, help him out. If he's not, cut our losses, grab that statue, and get our way back to, was it Oaks, Oak, Oak Grove, Oaks Build? You know, See if we can get some reinforcements to fix the cheese. That, it's a risky maneuver uh, in that two people would need to be real sneaky. But I have another idea. If someone was willing to try to pretend to be one of the, the rats and could succeed, I'm convinced, drunk though they may be, that the dead rats have something of value they've taken from the town. There must be something down there in the great hall that they're that they're they're keeping here. There's no other reason for them to be here. Uh, they took most of the townspeople. They plan to feed them to a cat. Oh dear. Yes, Ooh. they're they're at their rat base further north of here. That's where most of the townspeople have been taken. So the fact that rats are still here means that there must be something there. Perhaps if one of you could sneak inside with them being drunk, uh, you could find and snatch that, and then we could, with them distracted, check on Jack. Well, I can volunteer for the distraction plan. I can use my disguise kit. I have a musical instrument. Uh, we'll say it's a accordion that I've just pieced together of random rat crap and if they're drunk i can easily mimic drunk matter in fact and he grabs a, a nearby bottle <laughs> just throws a little bit back and he's like i can easily mimic drunk <laughs> rat long enough to distract them but for you all you you have the real danger of kind of going in and, and seeing about finding jack and helping him to safety do you think you can handle rockford says i'm sneaky I can find Jack. I could climb Rockford's up onto the cheese game. machine. Okay. So we got one guy distracting the dead rats. We got one guy finding Jack. So now there's the mouse wheel. What was the mouse wheel for again? That opened up the cheese vat, right? Yes. Uh, I'm concerned that they may have let loose the snake in order to bar the passage. But if someone could be very sneaky and careful, maybe we could get... Uh, jack out without uh, um, without needing to confront the snake. Rockford's like, I volunteer. I can do it. Right, so we do uh, so we have the, sail, uh, the fail safe for the, for the snake because if it comes out and we can drop the, uh, the cheese on that um then we can then we can escape. So, yeah, I'll go. Uh, I'll head to the mouse wheel uh, for the uh, this in case we have to take care of that snake. Meanwhile, uh, Rockford heads to the find Jack, and uh, August distracts the mice. And if uh, Panier, um, I think he might be able to help with the combat in case the uh, the rats the rats attack. Because I think in the off chance that the thing with the snake doesn't work, I 
I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think more than I will more than one most should be consumed blade, this day. And I'll remain in an ambush position. We will stand together against the snake should the moment come. Excellent. This I like. Very well. Shall we? Alleyho. He takes another swig, and he <laughs> just between yeah. his disguise kit, the the tools in in this kit, and just what he was able to pull off of the dead rats down here, um, for their fur and outfits and and blades, he kind of equips himself as one of those and looks as dead ratty as possible. I start snapping. Nice. Okay, uh, I will remove I love the it. door. Um. And uh, immediately, uh, as you open the door, you can see in the dark, um, uh, you can see this huge snake curled up uh, in the darkness. Um, and uh, it, uh, its tongue he looks like out. The art. This thing, uh, for, for a mouse your size, this thing, you know, you are a fraction of the size of its head. You know, if this is like 20 mice long. Um, and you see this big contraption here. And you can s hear a mouse like shivering up in, up in top of it. Like, you know, uh, hiding. Uh, and it sees, he sees you. And he, he's like... Um, and uh, you can't see it from here, but uh, you can tell that there's a door down here. Uh, and you can hear the mouse, the, I'm sorry, the rats chattering on the other end of it. From what in the Chamber of Secrets are we going to do? Um, it, looks like, it looks like in order to get to him, like he could try to climb down, someone could try to climb up, or someone could use the mouse wheel to raise this, raise this platform at the pulley. You've got a snake that's asleep, and you've got the rats that could also come out. And the rats are apparently guarding something really important as well. Okay, I've got an idea, but I can guarantee it's terrible. Um, I'm thinking if the snake would try to eat the rats, we could potentially pit those two parties against each other. But most pressing and most important would be to, to rescue our, our comrade who we can see here. Yeah. And you know the rats know about the snake because they're the one that let it loose. They're basically using the snake to guard that area and protect them at this point. Have they been coming in and out from here? The rats? Um, yeah. At some point, yes. Uh, yeah. How is that possible, you might ask yourself. There, there is another way in there. Yeah, because there's a, you see a rat asleep and snoring back here with a big bloated belly surrounded by cheese. And there's a ton of cheese back there. It's back here? Yep. Okay. So if we can find the way in here, and, uh... I'm trying to think of another plan here. Um... I'm wondering if you can, uh, August, if you can get over here uh, and drop some fire into there. Oh, there there's a part. sneaky way in there. He's going to want to run out here. He's going to have to remember the uh, remember the snake. And then, oh, goodness. Um... So I guess from our current vantage of the room that's ahead of us with this mechanism and, and parts and pieces and current light and all that, I mean, do we see any potential hidey holes that the rats may have been using to circumvent the snake in order to, to go to other places of this, this room and area? Yeah, you're really confident that there appears to be, this appears to be one way. And that's the thing. So you look around and you're 100% sure there's no other way in or out of this place. But it's also obvious that the rats have come in and out. Uh, and it seems like the snake didn't bother them somehow. As I was checking for the rat's disguise from the from the dead dead rat, um, 
would there have been anything on its person that would have seemed off, uh, smelled a certain way, looked a certain way, anything scale-esque that may have been used to, you know, befriend or charm the snake in any way? Um, uh, not exactly, except they seemed like they were at ease at the time, like they were partying. They didn't seem threatened by the snake at all. And, um, and Panir, he comes up and he says, they must have, they must have the flute. They've taken the control mechanism for the snake. Snake charmer. Hmm. I definitely can't make any snake charming noises with an accordion. So... It's, it's obvious that the dead rats must have the snake flute. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we can't take too long. Um, goodness. Um, right. <laughs> there's, there's rolls happening. No, it's okay. So it's I'm okay. Peek down Nothing here. to see here. <laughs> Don't mind the man Squeak. behind the curtain. So I need to take care of the wheel. This is my goal. I need to get that taken care of so that this thing can come down. And then... You can also see an escape path up here. But of course, you all can just leave, I guess, too. So yeah. It's not snake size, though. There's also that. <laughs> and yeah. Can't, this snake can't fly as far as you know. Yeah, well, I guess we got to get up here. So I'm going to have to make my way down there. Originally, the idea was distract the rats, but now I think it's a snake. We need to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a like different setup can... than I imagined. Yeah, me too. So I feel like if we can get our little comrade guy out, even if the snake wakes up, if we can scurry up to that zone up there, we could potentially just drop stuff down onto the snake. Between your lucky rocks, I mean, throwing down pooch bottles and lighting them on fire, things like that. I feel like we could at least, you know, engage the snake and probably live. But I don't know how fast that thing moves. Uh, Panier looks at it. He's like, hmm. There's a single door down below us that leads into the Grand Hall for Stumpsville. I'm sure that they have it locked. If there was some way that we could quickly get it open and overcome the dead rats, we could get the snake flute, and then we would have control of the snake. Or if we could even distract them long enough somehow for someone to get the snake flute, then we would have control of it. I can get the snake flute. Look, I've got this hammer. I'm already dressed as a dead rat. I've got a bottle here. I can go in and bash the door in. I'll just act all drunk and just convince them <laughs> this is where the party's at. So I'm just coming in, right? And then when I go in, I'll just conveniently find the flute, grab hold. I mean, I'm already playing an accordion. I bet I could tear some stuff up on that flute. And I can just start playing away and hopefully keep the snake at bay with the three songs that I know. Two of them are just the Weller Man in different keys. <laughs> If you can get the snake flute and play it, it will put the snake asleep and we could rush the remaining dead rats and gain back Stumpsville. And we together could liberate Stumpsville. But if we don't yeah. get the snake flute from them, then and we don't get in the door, then, well, we will surely perish. It's a risky plan, but I think it's a, a great one. And I think... You know, while I'm at it, I can just see if I can hit the right note to convince the snake to eat the rats. All right, let's go. Let's do it. So you're going to go and try to get in the door with a disguise kit on and look like a dead rat? A drunken dead rat, yes. Uh, how do you use the disguise kit to make yourself look like a dead rat? So as we descended coming towards this area, we had killed some dead rats on our way in. I figure between the disguise kit kind of giving me the additional just looks of their ears and, and facial structure, 
I also grabbed their clothes and stuff on the way in, so I'd I'd, I'd be dressed to the part, and then just kind of have some scuffings and some some ear adjustments to to look more rat esque instead of more mice like I, I, I suppose, and probably wearing a hood of, of some kind just to kind of cover less mouse ear and probably right. kind of have some. Yeah, you, they right have here. like a, they have a hood and stuff, and you have their yeah. r- rain, raggedy clothes and everything, and gloves, and you just look like a maybe you put something under your boots, so you have kind of stilts, so you're like this like awkwardly tall mouse, you know? Yeah, make it to where you yeah. look like a rat. Okay, uh, so you look like a you look like a dead rat now. Uh, now, uh, what do you all do about the snake? Are you trying to sneak past the snake? Uh, is that the plan? Is the doors here that we're trying to get to? Uh, no, uh, he was saying that it's underneath you all, actually. Okay. You're like, you're like on a ledge right now. Yeah, yeah I guess we're still going to need a distraction for the snake. Well, I guess, yeah, uh, if... Oh, crumbs. Uh... And and at that, uh, um, Panier says, I, "I will distract the snake." There's got to be a safer way. What if we got Jack to just squeal as loud as he could and try to like deter the snake's attention long enough for us to drop down on this door? He puts his mouse paw on your shoulder and he says. I won't endanger Jack. The time has come. And he climbs down. And he like... Has he always been this cryptic? And he like sneaks forward. And then he's like... Like, you know, like, go ahead and try to, try to get through the door. You know? And uh, he waits. And this, he sneaks up onto the snake and everything. And waits. You know, in case the snake wakes up. Up my uh, sling at the ready as well. All right bombard the snake and at least anger it enough <laughs> all right i guess with this we employee can... i kind of come down onto towards the door and then just sort of check it at first to see if i can just open it um if it's is it locked or it is, is there any locked. chance i can open it uh it is in fact locked and i'm going to see if the snake right. wakes up um I just kind of look back to my comrades and say, here goes nothing. And I take my hammer and I just swing a big hearty swing at the door to see if I can uh, bash it open. Oh, okay. Make a strength check. That definitely wakes up the snake. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, All right. Strength check passes. uh, You shatter open the door and there are two dead rats standing here like, and they turn around like, who are you? And I just kind of lift up my hooch bottle from my little dead rat jacket and say, I'm here to play. Um, And then the snakes, you can see it rearing up, uh, up above uh, Panier, and he pulls out uh, his, um, uh, what do you call a a sewing needle as a sword? And he's like, don't dare, not today. And uh, it's he's able to act first, and he's actually just going to straight up attack the snake. Um, so let's see, he had a uh, surprise, so he's also going to do a D12 damage. And he stabs it right underneath its chin for seven damage. Okay. He's I'm going to huck a uh, um, sling sling bullet at that fella. Go for it. Here it goes, big numbers, two. two. He's also going to do it. That's a three. Uh, and, uh, it hits it like in the eye and stuff, and it backs up. Um, and before it's able to act, uh, sorry, what were you saying, Chris? When they uh, when they were like, who are you? Uh, I just kind of appear drunkenly and hold up a bottle and like, I'm, I'm here to party. And I'm all like trying to convince them I'm a dead rat. All right, make a willpower check with advantage. All right, yeah. Uh, my will is 12, and I rolled a 12. So does that count as a pass, or is that... Do I have to beat 12? 
Uh, you need equal or under, so you pass. Awesome. Hey. Nice. Uh, okay. Look, you gotta get in here and close the door. There's mice in here, and they're they're taking over the place. The filthy mice. Uh, let me see. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh Balthazar. She, she left us here to die to these stinking mice. We thought this place was cleared. Uh, well, you gotta close the door, and you can see that there is a flute hanging off of his belt, and um, you can see other things on the table. You see, uh, you see a rune laying on the table, and you see uh, a pile of stuff that gathered. I mean, you're you're not. You're not scared of that snake out there. I mean, it, it's about to eat that mouse. You, you don't want to miss that, do you? And he kind of points out the door and sees if he can show them where uh, Reaper Cheap just stabbed it. What's your intention? What are you trying to do with them? Seeing if I can distract them long enough to where if they, like, try to rush past me for any reason, I would try to go and, and make a grab at the flute. Yeah. But if, if they try to move more towards the door... I'll just kind of settle in and, and kind of see what's what's happening. Well, they're drunk, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see if you can distract them. Make another willpower check with advantage. Awesome. All right. Um, okay. And if you fail, uh, then the snake's going to get its turn. Oh, I failed. Oh, oh uh, no. All right. Did snake. you do with advantage? You get to roll yes, two. I did. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, it was bad. The snake gets oh. to, to do its turn, and it's going to do, uh, it does two attacks. Uh, it also has armor, too. I forgot about that. I should subtract that from the damage, which I will. Um, and it does... Oh, if it does critical damage, that's really bad. Uh, okay, two attacks, D8 bite. Two D8. It does eight On damage. Ones. That is not a one. Got one in it. There's eight damage to Paneer. Uh, Paneer has... What's a standard hit point for a mouse? If he's level one, uh, I guess it'd just be a D6. Oh, so it's not even mathematically possible. You can actually see him, like, like getting, like, this thing, like, snapping down and... and and biting into him, and it stabs him through all the way, and you see Paneer like spin around, and then like fall forward and like fall onto his side dead. His uh, no. his, uh, his uh, sewing needle clamber to the to the ground, and and uh, Rockford can't help himself. He goes no, and he like yells and uh, alerts the dead rats, and the dead the dead rats are like, see, we told you, there's mice here. And, uh, let's see, um, back to you, what do you do, um, August? He just kind of reels back, and he's like, oh, yeah, that, that guy, he, he didn't make it, let me just go ahead and slam this door shut, and, um, I guess from this point, uh, I just sort of take a, a swig. I don't know if I'm trying to convince them or if I'm drunk or if I'm just kind of toasting the, the fallen hero. But, um, yeah, I just sort of, of settle into the room a little bit and kind of see how they start to act towards everything that just happened out there. What outcome do you want? So, I guess more than anything, I'm trying to buy myself an opportunity so I kind of need them to, to kind of either fall into a state of drunkenness to where I can manipulate the situation a little better, or I need something chaotic enough out there to happen to where they're called into a different course of action. What do you want to have happen in the end? Do you want them to die? Do you want the flute? Do you want the... What do you want? So I definitely need to grab this flute... Um, so I guess from here, you know, I, I'm going to be looking for some sort of opening through the conversation. And then if I can grab it, uh, my next goal would just be to escape the room and see if I can start, you know, calming this, this thing down. Oh, uh, make a willpower check with advantage. Or save, right. save check. 
Okay, well, I saved on the first time, so that's a, yeah, yeah, that's a good save. All right, you have the flute. All right. Yeah, caught. Wow, okay. That's really cool looking. Oh, there's a little flute noise. Tweet. <laughs> okay, so with this, uh, you know, I now have this, this flute. Um, I, I just, you know, try to once again convince them. I'm like, you know what? I just, I just want to go see the snake, and I'll just try to act to that level of drunk where you just have no sympathy for what someone does, and just sort of, just try to lean back out to the door and, and head outward. Um, they're like, what, what are, are you trying to leave, or what, what are you trying to do? Are yeah, trying... if I've got the flute in hand, I'm going to try to just start making my way out so I can play this thing down. Oh. Uh, you do that. Uh, you want to try to do that with the snake? Try to play the flute? Yeah. Uh, the dead rats, they, uh, they're like, Whoa, you idiot, what are you doing? Don't leave! But they stand there. They don't, they don't leave. So you're able to leave if you want. Yeah. Um, and then if you play the flute, it causes, uh, the snake to just, like, become woozy and then fall asleep. All right. Cool. Well, that's it. <laughs> It's a crisis averted. Well, sort of. We we lost Reaper Cheap, our, our main rat hero of a man. Um, quick, go! Yeah, yeah, the rats come come out after you, and they say, "Well, what do you do? You have to come in. There's mice out there. We don't know how many there are." Well, there's there's, and he, you know, kind of standing. He's kind of walking his way more towards the center of this room. They keep and, and you. just start kind of. Pointing them out, he's like, there's at least six that I can see. And, I mean, that one had a really cool sword. I mean, that snake's asleep. I'm I'm going to go grab it. And I just sort of keep tweeting the flute and just edge closer and closer to the snake. It's definitely to... asleep. And then two dead rats come out. And, um, uh, right, what... ambush. Ah, yes. <laughs> uh, um, Shim, you may... Make a um, dexterity saving throw to see if you are 20 and what advantage? Is a one. Ah, nice. Well, another one. It's like the some of the best rolls. Did it does uh, that make it a, uh, a the d12 one or would that still be the d6? Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, you totally have a d12 now because you also have a. Uh, Awesome. Yeah. Just don't roll bad. Oh, 11. Uh, you kill one outright. The other one spins around afraid. And and then um, Rockfort, uh, he's also going to attack. But he's just got a little thing here. He does two points of damage and uh, hits. And uh, yeah. Uh, and then you're playing a flute. Uh, so he is now able to act. And uh, he he says, um, actually, he's going to try to run past and join his friend. Because he sees that as the only hope that he has. He makes it like this far. And his friend wakes up on the other end. And uh, it's Jarrell's turn again. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to hit that guy again. All right. Although I just think it's the funniest thing if you stopped playing and that snake just. <laughs> I thought about that, but I don't want to have repercussions upon. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> no, it's this is a fantasy game about mice. If you want the if you want the snake to eat the rat, I think it could work. Because it went past, right. and a snake would totally do that. That's how snakes are. Like a snake will stay where it's at, and then if you poke it or run past it, that's you know it'll. it'll I mean, with it being right there, I just sort of like scoot back towards this door and I just stop playing to see, you know, if it wakes up long enough to just nom this rat that's just right in front of it. Yeah, it, it absolutely does that. Um, see if it, Am I able to hit this guy? There's a 12. Uh, so, and it says here on the, on my snake oh. thing, it says, it says guard snake. Um, on a critical, swallows whole. So you just see like, Oh, that is horrifying. <laughs> And you hear it like, and you see it like go down its throat as this consumes this rat. Wow. 
And, uh, Am I able to hit this guy with a sling? Uh, if you want, yeah. You have a surprise okay, too. Six you damage. Do. Oh, yeah, you kill him outright. Play the flute, play the flute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I see this, and like, there's that little bit of alcohol still in my breath from where I took, you know, the, my mini buzz, and I'm like, well, oh, wait, yeah. And then I just start playing the flute and um, hopefully calm this thing back down. Oh, yeah, it, it goes right back to sleep. And, um, well, that, that just doesn't feel right. I can't, that was horrible. <laughs> I can't say that that's, nope. Ow, my immersion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, it's good, but it's bad because that was really horrifying. Yeah. Uh, oh man, how would I run this for kids? I gotta, re I gotta <laughs> think about this. I don't, I don't have a thing about like sheltering kids from stuff like that. I've been reading The Wizard of Oz. It's pretty horrifying. Um, oh yeah, that's some. Yeah, but um, yeah, the combat scenes in Wizard of Oz. But anyways, here you are. The snake has fallen asleep. You've killed all the dead rats. Uh, you have liberated the town of Stumpsville uh, from the dead rats, uh, except poor... Uh, um, well, first of all, Jack comes down because he's able to take his time and climb down. Jack is this... Uh, he's got old battle star scars. Um, he's kind of portly, though. And uh, he's like, Oh... Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for your help. Um, I uh, I thought I was done for. Oh no. Oh poor Paneer. This is the last time that you were our hero, Paneer. And he closes his beady mouse eyes, and they open anyway again because it's a mouse. And he and he's like, poor Paneer. We'll always remember you. He died the way he lived, Indeed. saving others. Yes. There's nothing here actually... left for the town. Uh, I suppose you should take it to Oaks Grove. And please, we should try to... Uh, I should come with you. And we should try to find the others. Have to, yeah. Um, do you try to get the thing out of the pond? Yeah, let's loot the place real good. Um, yeah, as, as I'm starting to kind of play and keep the snake asleep, I actually try to maneuver over and grab uh, the sewing needle that was the sword and then pass it back to the to the little brother mouse. And I'm just like, he, he would have wanted you to have this. Wow. They're still protecting something over here too, eh? Oh yeah, so he was eating all the cheese. You find 800 pips worth of cheese. They're wow. huge cheese wheels that are 100 pips each. There are eight of them. And also, uh, I gotta roll twice. Um, you all killed Ernie the dead rat. Didn't even let him try to surrender. And then, where's the treasure part? Here it is, maybe, yes. Treasure table, here we go. We're gonna find out what you all get in here. You find, uh, ooh, a bag containing six times, that's 600, 300 more pips, a bag of 300 pips. And also you find uh, useful D6. I love treasure tables. Useful, you find um, a uh, just a simple weapon. Um, and uh, where's my weapons here? We're creating a mouse. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. You also find a a stick. It does uh, d6 damage. It requires both paws to use. Okay. Who want, does anybody want the stick, or are you going to sell it? We'll probably just sell it. Yeah, we can sell the stick. Okay, the stick is worth one pip. One, one pip. pip stick. <laughs> okay, 
Um, you all have saved the town of, well, liberated really the town of Stumpsville. Uh, somewhere to the north, um, the dead rats are working for the, the evil cat Balthazar and uh, stealing mice um, and have dragged them off somewhere. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the end of the Stumpsville quest. Anyways, 